Trisha Morris from Club Scrap based here in Nina, Wisconsin. So I've got three goals for our 20 minutes together. First, I want to show you how you can create something out of products and supplies you already have in your stash. Secondly, I want to show you some tips, techniques, and tools that I use to kick my scrapbooking up a notch. And third, I'll explain how the Club Scrap membership works and how these time-saving techniques transfer into what we offer our members every single month at Club Scrap. All you need are five sheets of 12 by 12 paper to get going. So paper A, B, C, and then two of the same color for paper D. I'm also using my 12 inch Fiskars guillotine trimmer. I'm also using something that I made myself. This is an accordion pocket file. And we use these every month at Club Scrap while we make eight layouts at a time. So as we trim our pieces, they're sorted into one of four pockets. So I'm gonna just go ahead and um, place the lip of the accordion pocket file underneath the base of my trimmer and that holds the pocket vertically so that I can just easily and quickly place all the pieces I've trimmed into the pockets. Everything we trim that will be end up on the left side of the layout will go into the first pocket and everything we trim for the right side of the layout will go in the second pocket. Now of course you probably don't have this accordion pocket file yet. Um, no worries, just simply have two piles, one for the left page and one for the right page. And I'm selecting uh, for paper A, a print from our vintage Americana collection. And I have this beautiful flag print and then I have a red plain, a blue plain, those are my A, B, and C papers. And then I also have two caramel colored or gold colored planes. Those will be the base of my layout, so these do not get trimmed. Now our instructions every month for our kits look very similar to this, um, except the indicators on the graphic will tell you which pages will be used on. In this case, I just decided to put in an L and an R so you would know what paper goes where. And you can see here on this first diagram that it says papers A and B. So these two first pieces will be trimmed exactly the same way. So it says trim papers A and B at nine and a quarter. Now most days I would just trim both at the same time, but I'm gonna go one at a time because you're probably new to this. So I'm gonna find on my cutting board or on my trimmer here, I do have the inch measurements. That's the second row of numbers. Here's nine. And then if I just go one vertical column to the left, that's nine and a quarter. Stabilize on the clear bar before I slice. That keeps the paper from buckling when the blade comes down. Then I'm gonna rotate this and I'll cut at eight and a half. Okay, now this piece, because it's A, will go in pocket, in the first pocket or the first pile. And then this other piece will go in the second pocket. And now I have this long strip. Our first trim is at 11 inches, then nine and a quarter, then six and a half, and finally, three and three quarters. Okay, so this piece will go into the left pocket along with two other squares that we trimmed earlier. So all three of these go in the first pocket. And then we have this uh, little rectangle. With this trimmer, I can trim a paper of pretty much any size. I'm gonna trim this horizontally at one and three quarters, but bring it to the middle of the measuring area and cut it one and three quarters. And I just made a square. So I'm gonna put that square in second pocket. <laughs> okay, now I regret to inform you that these are scraps. My guess is you could probably find a home for them if you wanted to, but that's a very tolerable amount of scrap for our project. Next, I'm gonna grab the next sheet of paper in my pile. This is um, paper B, or in this case, I selected red. So our first cut is at nine and a quarter. And then let's rotate that and cut it eight and a half. Now this larger piece is gonna go in the second pile and the skinny piece this time is gonna go in the uh, first pile or for uh, the left side of the layout. Now we have the strip, we'll cut this again at 11, nine and a quarter, six and a half, and three and three quarters. This piece and one of the squares place it in your second pile. Then this square, you can place that in your first pile or the left pile. Then we have the rectangle. Remember you can trim at the midpoint because there are measuring marks here as well. And I'll cut that at one and three quarters. And this square will go into the second pocket. And once again, we have two little scraps here. Taking paper C. So 11 and a half is the first cut. Then let's trim at 11. 
and then eight, and finally four. Rotate this four inch piece and we'll cut horizontally at nine and six. Take the large four by six mat you just made that goes in the first pocket and then you have two matching rectangles. Put one in each of those pockets, the first and the second. Okay, now this next strip, this is currently four by 12, so this is the other one. We'll cut this horizontally at 10 and five. You made two matching rectangles. Those go in the second pocket or pile. And you have a little two by four. We're gonna cut this horizontally at two and you'll notice again, and I'm going to the midpoint. You don't have to, but I kind of like two for those smaller pieces. These go in the second pocket. You have another piece. This is three by 12. We're gonna do some a simple cut here. This is at nine, six, and three. And what that gives us is four perfect squares. Three of them will go in the first pocket, and one of them goes in the second pocket. Then finally, you have two narrow strips. Put one in each of your piles or pockets, and that's a hot pocket. It's all done. <laughs> Next, let's take the two pieces we've selected to be paper D. That's the base of our pages, and I'm going to put them side by side in front of me. And from the pockets, I'm going to take everything out of the first one and put that to the left. And I'll take everything out of the second one, and that's going to end up on the right. So I'll start by taking this largest piece. I'm going to put that along the left edge of my base paper, followed by a right, the, the red piece, in this case paper B, that should be the same height and kind of forms a little block of my um, base here. Then across the top, I'm going to add the 4 by 6 In this case, it's blue. Right next to it, there should be another piece of the same color that has a mate that nests right with it. Now, let's just say, I don't like that stripe going the wrong direction. You can do something really handy and just flip the paper over to the plain side if you want. No problem. Then there should be three perfect squares. And then I'll nest some smaller squares and they're designed to fit in there perfectly. Next, I'll take everything on the right side of the layout and we'll continue on by placing the largest piece right next to the red and it should be able to just line up really nicely. And then this print carries over from the left to the right side here. Once again, we'll kind of anchor everything with this sweet little blue strip. Let's see what's happening. We've got like a medium sized mat with a piece of red that nests on top of that. Another blue square with a piece of red that nests on that. Two verticals, two smaller squares, and then two nesting squares. So of course nothing is set in stone. You could of absolutely flip this over to the plain side if you wish. However you want to do your page. And then you can also switch it so that they're running vertically or rotate them any, any way you wish. Very few, if any, scraps. And I'm helping you use what you have in your stash. Do you have a stash at home by any chance? If so, this is the cure for that. The next part of our agenda for today is for me to show you a few of my favorite tools. And I've already showed you two of them. The first one is that guillotine trimmer. This does not leave my side. It's very lightweight. And then I also showed you the accordion pocket file. I've got these accordion pocket file starter kits. Of course, you can make this just with my video tutorial, but if you get the starter kit, it comes with our awesome uh, club scrap book binding glue, a nice two ounce bottle of that, as well as a needle tip applicator that I love to use for applying my adhesive. And then the labels for the pockets and also some um, hook and loop dots to help hold this um, to the back of your trimmer just as a safety. Now the other tool that I really, really love is my 3x14 grid ruler. This ruler is my uh, right hand basically when I'm scrapbooking. And on the ruler, there's a 0 to 14 on, the, on one side and then the other goes 7007. So if I'm going to start adding things to this layout, the first thing I would do is um, I'd probably start by nesting these um, squares onto the page, onto their mats. And I'll just go ahead and do that. Okay, so all those pieces are basically nested. Then I'm gonna set, set them aside. I can consult my image again for, for placing those in the correct place. But the first piece I'm gonna put down is this red running along the center. Now by center, I can actually perfectly place this. So here's the six 
on my ruler. There's the zero, and there's another six. Now, if I take this and I match it along the edge, when I get to the measurement of, in this case, it's four and five eighths, not too hard. There's four and a half, four and five eighths on each side. I know that that's gonna be the center. So I will apply adhesive to my panel. Make sure my ruler hasn't moved. I'm gonna rest this panel with the adhesive on it at four and five eighths on each side. And I'm gonna drop it down. And now I know it's perfectly centered from top to bottom. I can then easily just add adhesive to the printed area, printed piece, rest that against my existing page, and drop that down. Now I think I'm going to have this running through the center here, and um, that's going to be at, you know, this is going to be at six inches again. And uh, once I kind of figure out where that's going to be, I'm going to rotate my ruler and just place it on my page to, and rest it against the edge of the strip. And that way I know it's perfectly level. Another thing you can do is take rulers of other sizes. We are also have one um, that I can rest on here and combine this larger one so that I know I've got it nice and level and at the correct measurements, kind of cool thing. When I'm adhering really narrow strips like this, I typically use a needle tip applicator with our book binding glue in it. And this is what you would get if you got that accordion pocket file kit. And I just dispense this liquid adhesive. It gives me a little bit of adjustment time as well if I don't place it perfectly. Now with the adhesive on, I'll rest this along the edge of the ruler, drop it in place, and press down. And it did move, so now I can move it back because it was a, a liquid adhesive. I have that flexibility. So now I know this piece of paper is perfectly level and perfectly centered top to bottom. You might think, oh, geez, that's kind of intense, Trisha. So it, if this is way past what you really want to do with your pages, of course, that's fine. But I do really love to have that um, as an option. And then, of course, you can just adhere things as well. And in a situation like this, you by all means can once again take your grid ruler and rest it on a, on a straight edge and just rest these on the ruler just to make sure they're equally spaced and level. Because there's nothing I hate more than adding like a strip like this and having it be crooked and then everything else after that is crooked as well. It really bugs me. <laughs> so that grid ruler and a combination thereof, we also have a two by eight size that um, is just kind of handy for card making and when you can't find your two by eight or your, or, I'm sorry, your three by 14 or your eight by eight, sometimes I just use a little guy. Either way, um, this, is, this is a really essential tool for me. They're not a huge investment, but they sure pack a lot of power behind making you look like a professional. The next thing I use my 8x8 grid ruler for is when I'm finishing my layout. So if I hover my ruler over the spot, the reading I get is 2 and 3 quarter by 2 and 3 quarter. No problem. I'm going to hover over my picture and make sure if I trim this to 2 and 3 quarter by 2 and 3 quarter, this is the perfect picture for this spot. I'll trim it to that and plop it in place. But I will assure you that this is the fastest way to make beautiful layouts without all the agony of trying to figure out uh, what they're going to look like. When you start with a picture, it takes a lot longer than when you start with a layout. And you'd be surprised. Let me show you a few other completed layouts using this formula. I handed this formula to Karen, who works at Club Scrap, and she took papers from the Hello Sunshine collection, that was from earlier this year, and finished it out following the same exact recipe and was able to create these beautiful layouts of her and her daughter at the Botanical Gardens in Green Bay from last summer. The next pair of pages were made with next month's kit. This is July's Prism collection. So I took one of the beautiful white prints, a yellow plane, two blue planes, and then a light blue plane, followed the same exact formula and made this gorgeous layout using pictures from our, our um, 20th anniversary cruise from last March. So Club Scrap has been making kits now for 21 years. Speaking of, let's go to the third part of our presentation. I just wanna tell you a little bit about how a Club Scrap membership works. I have a bunch of things to show you here, but first is the beautiful box. Our uh, kits are shipped in a really nice sturdy 12 and a half inch by 12 and a half inch pizza box. And our members use these for all kinds of things once they've carried the kit to their doorstep, um, like paper storage and organizing and filing their, their pages. 
Um, inside the prism collection, I have it out of the packaging and everything so you can see, but we've got some beautiful ribbons, some gorgeous prismatic washi tape. We have some medallions and some little jewels. We have some foam adhesive circles with a pull tab. This is just one example of a collection. Then we give you a set of uh, 12 pre-cut photo mats. These are trimmed to four and a quarter by six and a quarter because you can't get the size efficiently from a 12 inch sheet of paper. So we just give those to you pre-cut. Then we've got four really cool uh, long tags and then we have some sheets of cut aparts and these are pieces of artwork that help you finish your layouts more quickly here is that gorgeous prism 12 by 12 white print and then we have the 12 by 12 black print plus a whole assortment of other papers uh, most of them are 80 pound cover weight if I can get it in that weight I do um, and that my friends is the club scrap July prism collection so if you were to join the club Today, for example, this would be the kit you would receive and it would ship next week. But that's not really all that you receive because there's so much more support that we provide to help you use everything in the box. That starts out with a sheet of a printable. It's a download of very detailed instructions that follow suit with what you've already learned from me today. So that includes um, an image of each cut apart sheet that we gave you, plus the roadmap for how uh, those pieces are used. What layout will that be used on? Well, the number is right there. So of course, and you can file it in your accordion pocket file. So that's kind of a handy thing. Plus, there will be a video with yours truly. I'll walk you through the trimming process. We'll do it together. On the next page is all of the specific trimming instructions and the map to where you each piece will be used on what layout and whether or not it's a scrap. For example, on this particular kit, there is that piece with an X on it. That means it wasn't used. In other words, after taking all of the stuff in that box, this little quarter inch piece is the only piece that you won't use if you follow our assembly instructions. Do you have to do that? By, by no means. You can do whatever you want with our kits, but we have found that our members take so much more joy in their scrapbooking if they don't have to stress out about how it's going to turn out. And um, they don't have to worry about uh, deciding what goes where. We just take care of it for you. Followed by that is an image of all four double page spreads. So that's eight layouts per month. And it even tells you what size the photo would need to be to fit perfectly into the spot that we've created. So these instructions are extremely helpful, but they're always accompanied by an assembly video where I will walk you through. So here is the example of our... July Prism Collection, after following the instructions, this is what the pages look like. The, uh, we use the washi tape, the ribbon, all the things that we've included. Check out those cute little gems. I just love this. It's so colorful, so bright and beautiful. And again, perfect for outdoor pictures, cruise pictures, travel, vacation, poolside. Maybe you're at home doing nothing all summer. I don't know, but I'm guessing it's going to go beautifully on these gorgeous, colorful papers. So that was the eight layouts that you would get if you followed my instructions. And I want to show you one other thing that is included with your membership, and that is an additional download, just like the one that you uh, did with me today. It's another page formula. This one is for next month, July, and it tells you what to gather, exactly how to trim it, and the page it will create. So I went ahead and just made a sample page of the layout formula you will get if you join uh, and you use this page formula with papers from the Prism Collection or with papers from your stash. Because again, I want to help you every month use what you have, use what we send, so the stuff isn't accumulating and then overwhelming you. Um, I admit I am a little overwhelmed by my stash at home, and um, I've not been adding to it since I've developed this clever method. So build your library of page formulas as a Club Scrap member. I really would love to have you join us at Club Scrap, and if you're interested, I do have a gift for you. If you join uh, through July 2nd, and um, use the code SSB0620 when you join, you will be given this accordion pocket file kit. The sheet of paper in here, if you flip it over, is the link and password for the instruction tutorial, the video tutorial, and a printable. And I will guide you through assembling this uh, into your accordion pocket file of your very own so that you can be as efficient as possible in making your pages. 
So thank you so much for tuning in to this presentation. I hope you learned something. I hope that we met our goals. And again, shop with SSBE0620 as your code, and you'll get free shipping and orders over $40. You'll get the accordion pocket file kit if you join, and you will get your member discounts through July 2nd. That is substantial. You'll save $8 on kits. But keep in mind, too, if you don't want to join, you can always shop, whether you're a member or not. We'd love to have you. See you soon.